Hello, Locked In fans. Beetle Bailey here with Locked In Sports. With the NFL moving into playoffs this weekend and training camp started with the XFL, here at Locked In, we are also gearing up for real football. Today, Locked In Magazine is in the Orlando, Florida, and it is only fitting that we talk some more about the Orlando Predators and another signing to their roster. With a new head coach and GM this year, marks the third in a row under new management for the team, and they continue to sign a unique array of players whose talents and a real football experience continue to energize the Predator fans and players. Joining me today, he spent his rookie season with the Carolina Cobras during the 2019 season, where he played wide receiver and kick returner. In 2019, he played four games, caught three passes for 45 yards and two touchdowns. On special teams, he returned six kicks, 123 yards, and led the Cobras in average yards per return with 20.8. In 2020, he spent time with the Jacksonville Sharks and then signed with Orlando in 2021, played five games, 40 catches, 350 yards, and four TDs. So 2022, saw him head to the West Coast and the San Diego Strike Force. And now he's back at the East Coast of Florida native. Please welcome Prince Shinola. How you doing, Prince? Thank you for having me, man. I'm doing great. Just getting off of work, man. You know, just, just hanging in there. Yeah, we all do that. Though. We got a little work to do. Um, did I? I mean, I got most of it here. Um, I think it's pretty correct. Uh, anything else? Um, maybe like in college ball, uh, we didn't quite uh, touch here at all. I mean, anything that you want to, you know, give us uh, some information, a little bit on your background? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm from Orlando. Um, grew up in Orlando. I've been here my whole life. Um, originally, I went to a junior college in California, Fullerton College. I was there for about a year and a half. And then transferred to my four-year university, which was Rocky Mountain College. I had a good year, good actually good two years there. Um, caught about 30 catches in total, but was a mainly a uh, return guy. You know, so um, I had a really good career returning. I set the record there in the 40-yard dash with a 4-3-3. Uh, man, it, it, was a, it was a different atmosphere compared to being in Florida. You know, being in Billings, Montana, if no one knows where Rocky Mountain College is, all the way in Montana. Right. Um, so... The weather, we got a lot of cold Canadian black ice. Man, it was just crazy. But I enjoyed it, to say the least. And from there, you know, I've been traveling and traveling the world, you know, and, and pursuing my professional career. I mean, I try to get uh, most of the guys that are playing arena ball to talk about a little bit because um, they've always mentioned about how the transition from being out outdoors in a, you know, an outdoor field, 100 yards, whatever, into the arena ball. Um, was it a big transition for you? Did you pick it up fairly easy or? Extreme, extreme transition. Um, it's still football at the end of the day. However, it's just more in a smaller space. You got to run routes in a smaller space. You have to understand that, Absolutely. okay, there's guys in motion now. So it changes a lot Casino. on defense as well. Yeah. So, I mean, still being a student of the game, everything is relatively the same. Um, just the space, you know, just probably 15. Because people say 50 yards, but it's really like 60 with the two end zones and all that stuff. So it's not that bad. It's not that short. It's just the space in the walls. The walls are undefeated. If you haven't heard, if you haven't heard, the wall is undefeated. So stay away from the wall. So you mentioned about uh, speed. I was wondering, uh, I noticed you have a little moniker, I guess, for your uh, Twitter account called Golden Flash. Um, yeah, yeah. That has to do, I guess, with your speed uh, and your fastness. Yeah, pretty much. I got that name, oh, man, I think it was in college. Uh, one of my good buddies just gave it to me. He said, hey, man, your name is Prince, so that's Golden, and you're fast like the Flash, so you're Golden Flash. I said, you know what, I'll take it. And I ran with it since. I haven't seen it anywhere, so. Yeah. So I know you've been up to a lot of things. Uh, I think something like pro days, uh, the CFL tryouts, XFL. Um, do you want to elaborate a little bit on what you've been doing the last couple of weeks and uh, maybe the year with uh, those different areas? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, uh, shortly after the um, the uh, the XFL showcases ended, I got invited to two private workouts for two teams, Orlando Guardians and the St. Louis Battlehawks. Um, did very well there. Um, speaking to the Battle Hawks a lot, but haven't heard anything. You know how things are. You know, right. I could be in the dark sometimes. But since then, I've just been working out. I've been training. Um, I train periodically with Kenny Shaw here in Orlando um, as much as I can because I do work at the Dodge dealership. So I do work Monday through Friday. And, you know, I don't make excuses. I just try to get in work whenever I can for the most part. But I am an adult. Want, I do need money. Yeah. You still want to play football, though, too, right? Yeah. So 100%. you just keep 
keep grinding on and working out and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've actually touched uh, the field with quite a few guys, man. Re most recently, it's been a lot of the XFL draft pool invites and draftees that I've been, you know, spending a few weeks with throwing, catching, running routes and stuff like that. So um, I'm hoping to pick it up now that I have my eyes focused on the Predators and finally being back home, being in front of my mother, in front of my family, my friends, the fans, everyone who loves me. And that's the thing about arena. You know, you get to interact with the community, with the fans, everyone that's there, you get to really let them into your life. They get to really talk to you while on the field. You know, I've experienced that, being able to talk to someone before my route even started, go and shake their hand real fast or say hi to a little baby, or, you know, just anything, really, just to interact with them, just to make them feel, you know, the environment, to get to know who I am, so. Well, just like the kickoff and kick returns, I mean, you're in the end zone there, and, and there's fans and, and players yeah. and people behind yeah. you. yeah. And, I've been there and it is an awesome experience to be able to just be that close to the players. And, you know, you don't always shake hands or anything, but, you know, maybe give a thumbs up or something or, you know, hey, you're going to do it this time, you know, I'm going to kick or return one back or something. You know, so it is, it's, it's a very uh, fan oriented uh, game. So um, yeah, it's great for everybody. So, um, did uh, with uh, talking about uh, the kickoffs and kick returns, um, I heard something about, and I didn't get a chance to really dive into it that much. Uh, are the return of the Nets coming back this year? Yes, they are. The Nets uh, are returning for 2023. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> it's going to be crazy because I'm used to guys being able to, to kick away from me. You know, like, hey, we don't want to kick the Prince. Let's just lose the yards. But now you really don't have a choice. You know, you're going to kick it to me, and you're going to pay for it. So, yeah. Do you think uh, kicking on the nets and back gives a little more of a chance to defend you? or um, that's Yes, yes, for sure. But it, it also gives my guys more time to get on their blocks if they missed it a little bit earlier. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it gives them a little more time because they're going to be running out for the answer anyway. So. Maybe you get that one cl closer crease and boom, off your – Boom, that's boom. it. That's yeah. it. So I trained, a a lot. I trained a lot with having my back toward the ball as far as kickoffs and punt returns with the jug machine. You know, I'll stand facing away from the machine and then I'm supposed to turn around once I hear it and then locate it. So it's kind of the same with the nets. You know, you want to locate the ball and then once you find it, you don't really have time to think. You got to react. Right. So, Great. so um, how's the tryouts uh, going down there? Um, have you... Uh, I guess um, notice any new players coming in. Uh, they, they signed some, you know, other guys that uh, played before. So, uh, how's yeah. it coming about? Well, looking at the roster, and I'm I've spoken to many of guys that I played with in 2021 season that are coming back. I cannot wait to share the field with them again. Those are my guys. Those are my, you know, what I'm saying those are my ride or dies. You know, so like being back in that environment and having that camaraderie with those guys just elevates everything. You know, we already had that championship mindset losing the first round of the playoffs when I played with them. And I know some of those same guys are coming back. We're going to be the nucleus of the team. Um, but as far as the additional pieces that we have, I cannot wait, man. I can't wait to meet these guys. I'm going to the tryout on the 21st that they're having here in Florida. Um, so <clears throat> I can't wait to see, you know, I can't wait to see what talent comes out, shake hands with new faces and, and just to hear guys' stories. Because, you know, everyone gets caught up in football, but no one really understands. And everyone gets caught up in the success, but no one really understands what's been put into that or what kind of road they had to take to get there. You know, so I like hearing stories from players. I like hearing the journey, you know, trying to understand what their goal is. Right. And not a lot of people, I guess, I mean, it might have been brought about maybe when, uh, I guess, when Tom Brady retired last year that, you know, guys are more uh, it was like a brotherhood uh, uh, you know, you miss playing with the guys, you know, conversing with the guys. I mean, it's like a family, a family reunion. So when you get back together, you know, it just uh, feels a little bit better to, to be able to be with those guys and, and I guess, gel with the team, right? Right, exactly. So, um, one thing, I guess, uh, other than uh, your, uh, I guess, playing with the, the Orlando Predators, um, something about, uh, I think it's a max football game, Um you were getting maybe uh, some of your moves and stuff were being used for this game? Yeah, yeah. Um, that opportunity actually came to me, I believe it was last year, the beginning of last year. Um, 
I was traveling to Iowa to play for the Iowa Barnstormers. They called me up because I played for um, Albany Empire, uh, AF1, in 2019. And the coaches, Les Moss and Rob Keith, were there at that time. Flash forward the next few years, they are in the playoff position. And they're coaching at the Iowa Barnstormers or for the Iowa Barnstormers. So they called me up with the hopes that they'll get me in a game for the first playoff game. So when that was happening, uh, Max Prep Sports contacted me because of my good friend, Balen Shugio. Um, he was working with them and doing animations and stuff. And he thought about me and wanted me to come out and do it. So I couldn't, I, I wasn't even in the state, you know, so that, that couldn't get done. But flash forward now, you know, the universe always works in the way that it should. Um, I was able to meet up with them again. And we had a wonderful few days just going through animations, going through moves and seeing myself on the computer, how I look with a little skeleton body. <laughs> yeah. It's so cool, man. Yeah. It's so cool. So they're, they're supposed to be using some of my moves and animations in the real game and, and being able to choose me as a main character as well. Now, did you also so, um, have anything to deal, do with the uh, breakaway data? Uh, something that I think's uh, coming out, uh, you know, help, uh, I guess, scouts and coaches and stuff a little better? Yeah, actually, um, the breakaway data company and myself, we, we've we've conversed a lot since last June, which was the IMG showcase in Bradenton. That's where I posted a 21.6 miles per hour for them. Right. And they dove deeper into the athlete that I am. And they wanted to really bring me on board, you know, and, and try to do something with breakaway data as far as me, the XFL and breakaway all in one. Um, however, we didn't get to reach that yet. But I'm hoping in the near future we can reach some type of ambassador agreement or something like that to where, you know, I can market them and they can market me because they told me I was a high user for, you know, for the company. And I, I use their 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 data and their information a lot. So it, it was amazing, though. You know, it was amazing to get on those Zoom calls as well with Breakaway and them breaking down to me like you're such a superb route runner. Where have you been? You know, so I had to share my story of being homeless and all that stuff, man. And. It was a good talk. Yeah, great. Yeah, I, that's uh, it's something I guess that would actually. I've been to a number of combines, and it's it's just kind of odd uh, to see some of the drills that they do and how that actually data that they get off those drills, you know, would help them to evaluate the, the player himself. You know, so something extra that can help them would really be a plus, I would imagine. Right. Um, so uh, speaking of that, uh, all that good stuff, uh, what can we look forward to with you uh, maybe going into the season this year for the Predators that maybe you didn't have a uh, year before something, uh, anything you've done maybe to prove yourself for this year? Right, man. I've, I've been working hard on just making a play, honestly. Just be simple. You know, just make a play, get in the end zone for the fans, for the team, you know, and just, just be a leader. That's something I, I touched on previously. With my stint with the with the predators in the past, it's just being a leader, man. Being learning, learning to to be vocal. And it's okay to to lift guys up, and it's okay to tell guys, hey, let's let's work on this after practice, or you know, just be a better team player overall. Honestly, I, I really would love. This is my my one of my main focuses this year is to get more involved in the community. Was, That's was my one of my biggest things is to get more involved with the community, touch as many people as I can in a mm -hmm. positive way. Yeah, usually that's no. one of the last one of the last things I kind of ask uh, guys when I talk to them is that, that I know a lot of them are are active and and they want to give back, you know, and do things. Yes. Like, so I usually ask, you know, if there's anything that you do do, you know, at the moment or something that you're planning maybe in the future to to give back to the community and work with. And a lot of guys do training and things like that. That's what I was gonna say. Um, the fact that I'm training with Kenny Shaw, um, he runs his raw raw academy camp every Saturday for free, and he brings little kids out there. And, you know, we see what they have. We put them through drills and stuff. And, you know, we kind of mold them from there. We also give them education. You know, we give them knowledge. We, we share. We have, like, story time. And, and we, we make them think about their why. Why are you doing this? Uh, yeah, you know? Them. And that's what I plan on doing is being more involved in that and just trying to corral the community, you know, together, starting with the kids. Okay. So then, uh, then we got one last thing then. Uh, we got the Predator Jungle. Uh, any word for the, the jungle fans? Uh, I know we got a couple of weeks of lunch or whatever, but uh, yeah, I'm sure they're itching to see you guys. Yeah, man, Predator fans, I just want to say I love you guys. I really appreciate you guys for supporting me and welcoming me back. I promise you, I'm gonna give you everything that I have to make sure that you guys enjoy the time that you come and see us. 
And yeah, man, that's just just get ready for a show. I'm back. Well, thank you, Prince, for uh, stopping out here and talking with us here at Locked In Magazine. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the field again and uh, uh, have a good season this year. Take care.